Solomon Martinez, 26 years of age, from Pueblo, Colorado, has been arrested on suspicion of first-degree murder whilst he was carrying a decapitated woman's severed hand in his coat pocket. That's right. He's been arrested on first-degree murder. The victim, whose details, whose name have not been made public at this point, was decapitated. Her hands were severed. And if I understand correctly, whilst he was arrested, he had one of her hands in his coat pocket. I'm no legal expert, but I would think that that's a pretty strong strong sign of his involvement in her murder. We'll go through some more details. On the afternoon of January the 10th, officers received a tip, potentially from the suspect's roommate, although that has not been confirmed within the article that I've gone through, but officers received a tip informing them that a homicide had occurred and that a woman was murdered, dismembered, and her body was dumped into Fountain Creek. Officers arrived at Fountain Creek and they located a deceased adult female, at which point a murder investigation was launched. An autopsy is underway to determine the cause of manner of the victim's death. So again, officers received a tip. It's believed that it could be from the suspect's roommate. Based on the information provided by the person that contacted the police, investigators went to the suspect's place of work, the Sangre de Cristo Art Center in Pueblo, Colorado, where the suspect works as a security guard. The suspect told officers that he hired the woman as a prostitute the night before. He went on to tell investigators that he dropped her off afterwards and everything was fine. Nothing to do with him. I'm no expert, but that story does not hold much water in my opinion. We're told that the suspect's roommate, his name Joshua Mazurko, was threatened by the suspect at gunpoint to help dispose of the corpse. The suspect threatened Joshua to dig a 10-foot hole. If he did that, the suspect would absolve the roommate of the debts that the roommate owed the suspect. Hey buddy, you see this blood on my hands? Well, that's because there's a dead woman. Now I need you to dig a 10-foot hole. If you do that, don't worry about the money that you owe me. We'll just forget about that. But make sure you dig a 10 foot hole. The roommate refused to help. He says that he was terrified. I was beyond terrified. I can't even put words to describe how physically scared I was. We're told that a witness, and it's not confirmed as to whether or not this is the roommate. I presume it is, but it's not confirmed. We're told that a witness provided police with a video clip of the victim surrounded by blood. We're not told where the victim was within that video clip, if that was close to Fountain Creek where her dismembered body was dumped, or if that was elsewhere. We're not told. However, However, we are told that investigators found the blood stains on the suspect's car. But again, the suspect, Solomon Martinez, is claiming that he's not responsible for the murder of the victim. In fact, he goes so far as to say that the roommate killed the victim. Do we know the true situation at this point? No, we don't categorically know at this point. We're not the investigators. We don't have all of the facts. Is it possible that the roommate or witness was involved? Yeah, I guess that's possible. We don't know at this point. But I've got to say, when someone's arrested with a severed hand, in their coat pocket and when asked about that by officers hey suspect just asking why do you have a severed hand in your coat pocket and the suspect replies saying oh uh, yeah no worries uh, I can explain that I hired a prostitute somehow their dead body ended up in my possession and my chihuahua dismembered the victim's hands and wrists forgive me for being facetious I'm not trying to do that for comedic effect I mean it's just me I'm just uh, pointing out the ridiculousness the absolutely hideousness of the situation if I were a betting man I'd put a thousand dollars on that the suspect Solomon Martinez again 26 years of age from Pueblo, Colorado, is fully guilty. He's trying to blame the roommate. He's trying to wriggle out of this, but he's been caught. He's been arrested with a severed hand in his coat pocket, blood stains in his car. He's admitted to being with the woman the night before. He claims she was a prostitute and that they departed ways on good terms. But then, lo and behold, his chihuahua has bitten off her hand. I mean, none of it adds up, or rather it does add up. If it looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, then it likely is a duck. And that's what's going on here. He's blaming the roommate. The roommate claims that he was terrified. The roommate claims that the suspect put a gun to his head or threatened him with a gun. It seems to me that the suspect is 100% involved. The roommate needs to be investigated. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm no law and order guy, but I would think that it would perhaps be wise to detain the roommate whilst investigations proceed, just in case he is actively involved in the murder of the victim. Again, we're not provided with any significant details in relation to the victim. We don't know her name. We don't know her age. We're told that it is believed that she was murdered. It seems inevitable that she was. We're told that she was decapitated. Her hands and wrists were severed. Perhaps she was dismembered in other ways. That part isn't entirely clear. And her body was found dumped like a piece of trash. And please forgive me. Dumped like a piece of trash into Fountain Creek in Pueblo, Colorado. But that's really as much as we know. We don't know her name. We don't know her age at this point. Really to respect the victim's family.
family and friends to allow some notification to occur before these details enter the wider public domain. So I'm going to say, of course, full condolences to all those touched by this horrendous murder. The victim's family, friends, absolutely devastated, shocked, faced perhaps for the first time in their lives with this horror of absolute evil. Their friend, their sibling, their daughter, their mother, killed, murdered, dismembered, de decapitated. I and mean, this is so difficult to process. How do you move on from this knowing that this kind of thing happens and can happen and has happened within your circle to someone so close to you? You're just going to live in a state of, I don't know what it would be, I'm, I'm guessing like um, there's got to be an element of fear which is going to remain with you for the rest of your life. You know, you may not even be aware of it. But there's just going to be this undercurrent of fear, disgust, horror just with you. Every moment of the day, it might not be at the forefront, but it's going to be there. It's going to be severely traumatic to all involved. To the roommate involved, if what the roommate is saying is true, there he is minding his own business. The suspect returns home, covered in blood, threatens the roommate with a gun, tells him to dig a 10 foot deep hole, you know? So if what the roommate is saying is true, then he's done the right thing. He contacted police. That's a brave move. He was threatened with his life and he stood up against that. He was smart enough to take video footage of the deceased body. So he's provided significant evidence to the police, to investigators, which will be provided to the prosecution. And that I would imagine and hope will go a long way to secure a conviction of the rightful party who, in my mind, my speculation could be wrong, is the suspect, Solomon Martinez. Fuck that sick C-U-N-T. Why would he do such a thing? Well, I've got to say he's just an utter psychopath. No respect for life. Perhaps it's a misogynistic attack. Maybe it's a, an attack on a prostitute, specifically targeted attack on a prostitute specifically. I need to be clear. I don't know. We don't know that the victim was a prostitute. That may just be an absolute fabrication from the suspect. We do not know that to be true at this point. Perhaps it is. Prostitution is a part of life. Always has been. I throw no judgment on that or not a lot of judgment on that. Certainly there's no justification for murder of really anybody, but certainly to be more pointed, there's no justification for murder of a prostitute just because she's a prostitute. That's the acts of a psychopath. And that's something that we've seen time and time again over the course of history, haven't we? I've got a YouTube true crime channel, but I'm not necessarily overly familiar with a lot of um, historic cases. But I, I do know that prostitutes have been victims of serial killers time and time again. Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy, he killed prostitutes, didn't he? Uh, I think at least some of his victims were prostitutes, male prostitutes. I might have that wrong. But regardless, we know that it's a known thing that prostitutes are targets of murder. So if we're to ask, how did this happen? I think the answer is, well, one psychopath or another, and I would hedge my bets that that psychopath is the suspect Solomon Martinez, but there is speculation. One psychopath or another took it upon himself to murder a prostitute because he's got a beef with prostitutes. But again, I need to be clear, I do not know, I am not stating for fact that the victim was a prostitute. So I think those are all the comments that I wish to make at this point. It's an absolute tragedy, seems to be a senseless, horrific murder. Again, full condolences. I'm going to wrap things up at this point. If you appreciate the coverage, please do like, comment, subscribe, share the video as you see fit. If there's any cases that you'd like me to consider covering, please do drop a note in the comment section. If you've got any feedback for me, let me know. If you want to say hello to me or any other commentators, please do, please do, please do, please do. I'm going to wrap things up. Take care.